Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PlayStation 3, Nintendo Switch, MAME, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about multiple arcade machine emulator MAME. And MAME just got its first release of 2023, MAME 0.252. If you are curious and wanted to read the change log, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. As per usual, there's been a whole bunch of bug fixes and improvements, and if you're on Windows, more X input controllers are fully supported, including guitars. It doesn't mean you can play Guitar Hero on MAME, but you can use a Guitar Hero controller. On top of that, the Nabu PC, which I've never heard about until today, is now supported in MAME. The MSX also got some love. MSX DOS 2 and RAM expansion cartridges are now supported. And the Hyper Neo Geo 64 got some improvements for both 2D and 3D graphics. Next up, we're talking about Zanga, a brand new Sega Master System emulator written entirely in JavaScript. Interestingly enough, the developer wrote this emulator in only 20 days and documented their entire progress in blog format. If you wanted to read it, I'll drop a link to this GitHub in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. And fun fact, Zanga is also available to play right in your browser, so I'll drop a link to this in the description below as well. It doesn't work with every single game, but it will play Sonic and Outrun and possibly a few more. And speaking about compatibility, next up we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline versus Egg NS. Someone has posted a video here of a direct comparison between Skyline and Egg NS using a Snapdragon 855 playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And taking a look at the gameplay here, I think it's pretty easy to see that Skyline has come out on top by a very, very wide margin. This is impressive, and Skyline only continues to get better. Now, I don't want to say the writing is on the wall for Egg NS, or this is the beginning of the end, but if you take a look at Egg NS on the Google Play Store, it's got a rating of 2.4 stars, which is not good at all. There are paid elements to this emulator, it's not necessarily cheap, and it is closed source whereas Skyline is free and open source and won't cook your phone in the process. And speaking about phones and CPUs, next up we're talking about Snapdragon, and there's a pretty big rumor out there that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 could arrive sooner rather than later, with some pretty beefy performance numbers. According to Android Central, which I will leave a link to in the description below, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is expected to be 25% higher in performance and 20% higher in efficiency compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. There is a whole lot of buzz around this new Snapdragon, and if you're in the market for a brand new cell phone but can hold out for a few months yet, you might want to hold out for a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, or at least see what it's capable of. And speaking about capabilities, next up we're talking about Xbox and Nintendo Switch, and there's a very interesting statement put out by the Xbox PR team. They've signed a binding 10-year contract to bring Xbox games to Nintendo's gamers. And this is hot on the heels of basically the court case between Sony and Microsoft. There's a very interesting sentence, and it's the very first sentence in this. Microsoft and Nintendo have now negotiated and signed a binding 10-year legal agreement to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo players, the same day as Xbox, with full feature and content parody. I don't know if that statement's entirely true, I don't know if you can play Call of Duty at more than 60 frames per second on the Switch. I don't know if the Switch is powerful enough to give you the exact same Call of Duty experience that you'd get on the other consoles. But who knows, maybe it'll be game streaming or possibly some other tricks or a seriously downscaled version of Call of Duty. Or maybe the Switch 2 or the Switch Pro or whatever console is next will be able to support it a little bit better. And Phil Spencer says they've also signed a 10-year agreement with NVIDIA that will allow GeForce Now players to stream Xbox PC games, as well as Activision Blizzard PC titles, including COD. In my opinion, I think this is a big win for gamers. You've got more games on more platforms. I don't think Sony feels the same, but at the same time here, Sony really only plays by Sony's rules. Let me know your thoughts about this entire situation in the comments below. And speaking about wins, next up we're talking about Bungie, and Bungie appears to be getting a whole lot richer, $4.3 million richer. They just won a court case against cheat seller AIM Junkies, and 
I think this doesn't bode well for AIM junkies. There is still some more court stuff to be done, but at the same time here, this is a massive blow to them. And speaking about courts and all of that stuff, next up we're talking about Reddit. If you are a Reddit user and you've posted in piracy subreddits, you might want to double check what you've posted. Apparently, filmmakers are requesting identities of Reddit users to aid a piracy lawsuit. As far as I know, Reddit is fighting back and not complying with it. But as far as I know, money also talks and, well, the filmmakers might have a lot of it. I'm kind of curious to see what happens about this one in the future, and I do recommend giving this article a read. I'll drop a link in the description below. And speaking about filmmakers, next up, this news is arguably a lot more positive. DreamWorks is making Moonray, their in-house 3D renderer, completely open source. This renderer, they say, was used in all of their movies since How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World. If you are curious about this one, and I'm assuming some people will be, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. And speaking about checking stuff out, next up we're talking about Tekken Tag Tournament 2 on RPCS3. It appears that Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is now online in RPCS3. If you wanted to learn more about it, I'll drop a link to the SRK Discord in the description below and feel free to check it out. And last up here, we're talking about GameCube and Wii emulation on Xbox with Dolphin, specifically Dolphin UWP. UWP stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Universal Windows Platform depending on how you want to interpret that. Anyways, Dolphin emulator for UWP version 1.1.3 was just released. If you are currently using the previous version of Dolphin, you might want to pick up this version here. Multiple controllers will now work by default. You can now load a custom background for your user folder. Analog triggers are now default for GameCube controllers and RetroPass is now fixed. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.